Hey there comic book fans. I figured I'd take time out to make a video looking at something. I decided to pull this off my shelf because I haven't had it open in years. It's uh, a tribute book to Gene Colan. Uh, let me see, when was this, when did this first come out? I think he was, he was sick. So this is uh, sometime just before he died. I think it came out only a year or two before he died. 2010 this came out. Uh, Invincible Iron Man, Gene Colan, the Invincible Gene Colan, that's Iron Man, edited by Clifford Meth, who I think just uh, died too this year or last year. He's sort of, he was sort of a comic fan historian. Let's take the, uh, there's a picture of Gene for you on the dust jacket. I like that, I like that Captain America back there. Um... Little intro to Gene Colan, in case you don't know him. But, uh, I was, I was a fan of Gene Colan since I was a kid. His Tomb of Dracula stuff from the 70s was excellent, along with all the sorts of other stuff he did. Be gone! Little Iron Man Gene Colan. Yeah, he did some Iron Man stuff. He did, he did everything. He did, uh... Tomb of Dracula, blah, blah, blah. oh, he did a lot of stuff for DC, The Night Force, I think he did Batman too. Oh, introduction, Before the Marvel Age, Prince, oh, that's right, he did Prince Namor too, Daredevil, he did a lot of Daredevil. Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Captain America, Dracula, Howard the Duck, oh, I forgot about Howard for a moment, and Miscellaneous Marvel, The Forgotten Comic Book Superstar by Tom Spurgeon, Gene Colan Interview by Clifford Meth. Oh, Nice picture. That looks like one of his uh, later things. Which, what's interesting about these two is I don't think he could see very well at the end of his life. But 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 it's like it's funny if you look at anything up close. This you kind of get an idea of how he sees because if you look at it from far away, it starts to get funky looking because it doesn't all fit together, but I think he could only see one small part of it at a time. And when you look at it at, up close, each one small part works well. But since he couldn't see as well, when you pull back, it starts to get strangely distorted. But I found that, uh, I found that interesting when looking at his later work. You know, the art, an artist's work often reflects how they see, literally, <laughs> and that sure did. Little introduction by Clifford, little pencil drawing of Doctor Doom. Oh, some of his uh, before the Marvel Age, some of his earliest stuff. I think I've got some of his earliest stuff in those uh, Atlas hardcovers that Marvel put out. The Masterwork, the Atlas Age Masterworks. Ventures into Terror. Nice cover. That almost looks like uh, Harrison Ford down there. 1954. He wished he was a vampire. There we go, nice war cover. Oh, well, there's a. I like that woman right there. Nice drawing. Awesome, cartoony Bigfoot style drawing. Let's see what else we have. Big and little. Oh, that's very uh, Will Eisner esque going on there. Big and little, unpublished art. The Capers of Kitten. Up oh, here, armed was uh, Prince Namer days. Nice reproduction of cover of 10. There's a pencil drawing. original art, reproductions of covers from Tales to Astonish, some Daredevil. They always did a nice job with the moodiness of Daredevil, especially uh, the pencil work. Commissioned art, inks by Dave Gutierrez. Oh, that's Bullseye. Bullseye's kind of eaten up by the Freaking binding, that's annoying.
That's a, that was like that, that that's also very Eisner-esque with the staircase framing them. Daredevil riding a horse. Daredevil number 363, page 18, April 1997. I don't remember. Well, I wasn't paying much attention to Daredevil then, but I guess uh, Gene Colan drew some Daredevil in the late 90s, huh? More Daredevil pages. Oh, nice collection of Daredevil covers. Though my, my old eyes have a tough time seeing these little covers. I would have appreciated that much more if I was 12. <laughs> more Daredevil covers. The Jester. The Stilt Man. Is this a current one? Yeah, this is a. This might be a one minute later. This is unused cover concepts for Daredevil number eight. Again, inks by Dave Gutierrez. This must be a new one. I can't fight the stilt man, he's too tall. Imagine that, a guy with power is he's too tall to fight. <laughs> commission dart. Commission dart. Dave Gutierrez must have been his uh, regular inker on commission dart. Some old stuff, a little... Gene Colan is truly a legend in the comics universe, Harlan Ellison. A little Harlan Ellison quote. Some Doctor Strange sample pages. That's a nice shot right there, isn't it? Doing his own take on Doctor Strange's magic. Ah, back when Doctor Strange had the blue mask on. Nice. Pa I don't think I've ever seen these pages before this book. I didn't. I never read a lot of that era of Doctor Strange. Um, my Gene Colan, oh, that's a nice double page spread. My Gene Colan, Doctor Strange era was when it relaunched in his own, uh, title with, you know, the new number one, the stuff that came out, I think in the late seventies. Not, yeah, not this stuff. This stuff, Doctor Strange 15. I had that one. That was my era of Gene Colan, Doctor Strange. All the way up into here. Oh, that's a nice one. Moody pencil drawing. Oh, I like that one too. Is that Hella? Let's see. <laughs> ah, an Iron Man's armor tore like paper. Tales of Suspense. That's nice. Good Iron Man splash there. I did it. Guess we're into his Iron Man age. The Titanium Man. Tales of Suspense. Inks by Frank G. Goya. Oh, that, there's a nice pencil drawing. Very dramatic lighting. Gene Colan, of course, was good with dramatic lighting. Lots of little covers here for Iron Man. Guest starring the Mighty Avengers. I don't know that I've ever seen this cover. Captain America 116. At least I don't recognize it. I thought I've... You know, you think you've seen all the Captain America covers, and all of a sudden there's one you don't quite recognize. Captain America and the Falcon. <laughs> Looks like we got some messed up type there. <laughs> type box on top of a type box. <laughs> They're messing up their type. They have type over type there. They want those two pages. Oh, it's another one. More messed up type. What's going on here? Someone didn't proofread this. Captain America covers. Ah, the Tomb of Dracula. Oops, let me get Dracula in the frame there. There we go. 
That's Harold Harold or something was his name. I can't remember. Something we hit a weird name. <laughs> Is that Dracula, Daredevil, and Gene Cole in there? Once again, getting eaten up by our binding. How annoying. Dracula Splash, Dracula Cover. Mission dart over here. But once again, inks by Dave Gutierrez. More commission dart. Yeah, this this book's got a lot of good unseen Gene Colon art in it, doesn't it? Oh, I like that. Spider Man versus Dracula. Cool. Oh, there's some, some nice pencil work there. Becomes an abstract piece with that hair and that clothing. Tomb of Dracula covers. More TOD. Oh, that's interesting. Howard the Duck. That's a Howard the Duck commissioned piece. Where all those people are. <laughs> Pretty neat. Howard the Duck original art. Howard the Duck covers. Captain Mar oh, miscellaneous Marvel. Oh, nice. Nice Thor right there. So expressive with the pencil was he. Blade. Marvel Super First Guardians of the Galaxy. Galactus running. I don't think I've ever seen Galactus running. Ah, his love comics. You can't love again. Oh, the forgotten comic book superstar. Yeah, now we go for the Gene Golan interview. Ah, Gene Colan is a we spent most of his adult life reading TV Guide as a child. All Gene was interested in were comics and adventure stories. It was Gene as a kid. Oh, that one's pretty nice. Pirates. There's Gene. We come to a little self-portrait sketch. And our end papers, Dr. Doom's Eyes. So there you go. A little look at the Invincible Gene Colon. Looks like the, uh, they just duplicated the dust cover on the book itself. All right. But there you go. A little look at this book. I, I don't think it's very well known. I don't, I don't, I, I've, this is the only, I have the only copy that I've ever seen. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has this out there. Like I said, it came out in 2010. It was published as sort of um, to raise money for him. Uh, and it's good stuff. Good look at uh, Gene Coleman.